Hi children, we continue with our chapter Acids, Bases and Salts. And today's topic is Importance of pH in Everyday Life. This is one of the interesting chapters in this, interesting topics in this chapter. Mm. So let's move on to the topic. Importance of pH in our everyday life. Always when you like write pH. Uh, P is small letter and H is capital letter. What is pH? Power of hydrogen. P stands for potence, the German word which means power and H stands for hydrogen. Okay. So, importance of pH in everyday life. The points under that. First one, the importance of pH in living organisms. Living organisms, especially human beings and animals so, the importance of ph in living organism keep in mind our body works within a ph range of 7 to 7.8 this is an important question the ph range between which our body works that is 7 to 7.8 neutral to slightly basic our body works within a narrow pH range of 7 to 7.8. Actually, it is neutral to slightly basic pH range. Okay. So, uh, then a normal pH value of our blood is 7 to 7.8. Any variation from this normal value indicates a disease condition and it is to be treated. Similarly, animal or animals also, their body works within a pH range of 7 to 7.8. When you come to aquatic animals, they are living in water. And uh, the water will have, uh, the, for the normal uh, life of these aquatic animals, the pH value preferred is 7 to 7.8. If there is variation in pH, their life uh, becomes a threat. Sometimes, uh, you know about acid rain. If the rain is acidic. What happens to the value of pH of river water? It goes down. Okay, the river water becomes acidic in nature. And if the value is less than the pH value of the river water falls below 5.6. The very survival of these aquatic animals become different. So, acid rain is a threat to the life of aquatic animals. If the pH value of the river water falls below 5.6, the life of aquatic animals at threat. Okay. Similarly, other chemicals, if they get mixed with water, again there will be variation from the normal pH value of 7 to 7.8. Large deviations can result in the death of these aquatic animals. Okay. So, that is the first one in living. What is the importance of pH in living organisms? So, that please remember the pH value within which our body works, that is 7 to 7.8. Any large deviation from this normal value indicate a disease condition and it has to be uh, treated. Medically, it has to be treated. And aquatic animals, if the uh, pH value of the river water falls, be less than 5.6 due to acid rain and all, uh, their life becomes a threat and uh, the survival will be difficult. Now, the second one is in plants. What is the importance of pH in plants? See, for maximum crop growth, maximum growth of the plant, the soil preferred is the pH value of the soil should be neither acidic nor Alkaline. Alkaline means basic. So, for maximum uh, plant growth, we prefer such a soil which is neither acidic nor basic. So, we, we means that a neutral soil is preferred for maximum crop yield. So, farmers, they can collect the soil sample of their uh, field and it can be taken to, there are soil testing laboratories where the pH of the soil is measured. So, they can carry this soil to the pH testing laboratories and it can be tested. So, uh, 7, actually the preferred uh, pH value is 7. Any deviation, large deviation from the normal value, uh, it will result, the affect, it will affect the growth of the plant. So, it has to be treated. That is called soil treatment. Uh, the, I think this you have learned in 7th standard. If the soil is basic. Due to mixing of chemicals like fertilizer, chemical fertilizers and all, sometimes the soil will become uh, basic. So, it has to be treated. Soil has to be treated with acidic substances. The excess base has to be neutralized. So, we add basic acidic substances to neutralize the excess base. So, the pH value is reduced to the neutral range 7. Okay. And sometimes the soil can be acidic especially due to acid rain and all. If the rainwater which is acidic get mixed with the soil, the soil will become acidic. 
so such a soil has to be treated with basic substances that is soil treatment soil is treated with a, a basic substance so the excess acid present in the soil is neutralized again the ph value is brought back to 7 so in such a soil there is maximum crop growth where the ph value is 7 neutral soil okay now the third one third one is in our digestive system importance of ph in our digestive system you know that our stomach produces a small amount of hydrochloric acid what is the function of hydrochloric acid in our stomach it helps in the proper digestion of our food so small amount of acid is produced by a uh, stomach only a small amount but sometimes due to indigestion speciality of certain food items that we eat it result in indigestion in such cases our stomach produces too much of acid we call it as indigestion or acidity we call it as acidity so excess of acid is produced in our stomach okay so how can we treat it how can acidity be treated it is due to excess of acid so the excess acid has to be neutralized to neutralize so in our stomach there is a neutralization taking place the excess acid that is produced by the stomach is neutralized by basic mild bases mild bases we call them as antacids antacids are mild bases which can neutralize the excess acid produced in our stomach examples of these antacids this you have learned in 7th standard milk of Magnesia is an example of a mild base that can be consumed to treat acidity. There is one more. The formula is MgOH twice. Magnesium hydroxide known as milk of magnesia. There is one more. Baking soda. Formula is NaHCO3. Okay. So these are and what are antacids? Antacids are mild bases which are consumed to neutralize the excess acid that is produced in our stomach actually it is used for treating acidity excess of acid produced in our stomach is neutralized by consuming mild bases called antacids examples of two antacids are milk of magnesia and baking soda M mgoh twice and nahco okay so this is the importance of ph in our digestive system a small amount of acid is produced by your stomach for the digestion of the food but sometimes due to indigestion uh, body pro stomach produces too much of acid which results in pain and irritation we call it as acidity so the excess acid that is produced by the stomach should be neutralized with uh, mild bases by consuming mild bases which are known as antacids examples of antacids are milk of magnesia and baking soda okay now we move on to the next topic that is fourth one tooth decay how is tooth decay what is the relationship between tooth decay and in treating tooth decay what is the relationship between tooth decay and ph okay what is tooth decay actually uh, the production of cavities in a mouth inside our mouth tooth decay starts when the ph of our mouth is less than 5.5 5.5 is the acidic range less than 7 is acidic range so when the ph of our mouth falls below 5.5 tooth decay starts and in that condition during tooth decay uh, the tooth enamel which is made up of calcium phosphate or tooth enamel is made up of calcium phosphate it is also corroded destroyed as a result of tooth decay it gets corroded tooth decay uh, affects the enamel of the tooth enamel of a tooth so tooth decay affects the uh, tooth enamel uh, actually tooth enamel is the hardest substance in our body which is made up of calcium phosphate it gets corroded and uh, how come the uh, pH of the mouth falls less than 5.5? What is the reason for this lower pH inside our mouth? As you all know, there is bacteria present inside our mouth. Okay. So, after having meals and uh, chocolate, sweets, chocolate, etc. If you are not washing your mouth properly, 
these food items will be remaining in our mouth. Leftover food items will be there. Leftover food items, leftover sweet particles, chocolates, etc. will be there in our mouth. So, the bacteria present inside our mouth reacts with these leftover food items and sugar particles and it produces acid. That's how the pH becomes 5.5 that is in the acidic range. Okay. So, the bacteria present in our mouth reacts with the leftover food items and sugar particles and produce acids. As a result, what happens? pH falls less than 5.5 and the tooth enamel which is made up of calcium phosphate gets corroded. So, how can we prevent tooth decay? So, it is due to the leftover food items in our mouth or the pH falling less than 5.5. So, washing our mouth after every meal. We have to wash our mouth after every meal and also we can make use of a toothpaste that is basic in nature. Make use of a toothpaste that is basic in nature and also after each uh, meal wash your mouth properly. These are the two ways in which tooth decay can be prevented. So, that is how tooth decay related to pH. Tooth decay starts when the pH of the mouth falls below 5.5. In this condition, the bacteria present in the tooth enamel which is made up of calcium phosphate gets corroded. The bacteria present in our mouth reacts with the leftover food items and uh, sugar particles producing acid. So, the production of acid should be, uh, excess of acid produced in the stomach should be neutralized. For that, you can make use of a basic toothpaste and also uh, you have to wash your mouth after every meal. Wash your mouth properly to remove all these leftover food items. Okay. Now the last one. Self defense by, by animals and plants. Self defense by animals and plants through Chemical warfare. Self defense by animals and plants through chemical warfare. Plants and animals in some plant and animal bodies, chemical substances are there. They are used for their self protection. First one is bee sting. When you get a bee sting, tenicha, when you get a sting from a bee, it injects an acid into our body. At least some of you might have experienced a bee sting. Huh? During this, the bee injects an acid called methanoic acid. This is an organic acid. Its common name is formic acid. This acid is injected into our body. It results in pain and irritation. We may have itching and other irritation. Pain and irritation will be there. So, as is due to an acid, this pain, irritation, everything is due to an acid called methanoic acid which is commonly known as formic acid. So, what is the remedy for this? How can you get relief from this? The affected area should be rubbed with a base like baking soda. So, it is due to an acid. So, the new acid that is injected into the body should be neutralized by making use of a mild base like baking soda, NaHCO3. So, the affected area can be rubbed with a base like baking soda. Rubbing the affected area with a mild base like baking soda can give you relief. Now, the next one is stinging hair of stinging hair of nettle plant. There is a plant called nettle plant. It is a wild plant and there will be small hairs in the leaves of this nettle plant, stinging hair of nettle plant. You all are familiar with this nettle plant. It is a wild plant and in Malayalam we call it as Toridhanam. When you touch the leaves of this plant, we start itching. Okay, so that is nettle plant. Here also the same acid, methanoic acid is injected into our body from the hairs of nettle plant. Methanoic acid or formic acid is injected into our body from the hairs of this nettle plant. Okay, so it is due to acid. So, we develop itching, pain and other irritation. So, what is the remedy for this? First one is this, uh, rubbing the affected area with baking soda. Rubbing the affected area with baking soda. And the other one is rubbing the affected area with the leaves of another uh, wild plant called dog plant. 
and it's also a wild plant you might have seen this plant rubbing the affected area with the leaves of another wild plant called dog plant okay so that is the remedy for getting relief from the stinging hair of nettle plant same acid methanoic acid is injected into our body since it is due to an acid rubbing the affected area with a base mild base can give you relief one is baking soda that can be rubbed in the affected area second one is leaves of a plant called dog plant okay so these are the importance of ph in our everyday life in living organisms like human beings and animals plants in our digestive system tooth decay and also self defense by animals and plants through chemical warfare okay now the next thing is uh, from uh, in from your ncert textbook in your ncert textbook page number 28 there is a table table 2.3 okay the table you have to learn there some naturally occurring acids are given acids present in some natural substances are given actually the same table you have learned in 7th standard i think this table was a little bigger in 7th standard more substances you learned here also you have to learn the name of the acids here only acids are there seventh you learn bases also okay acids present in natural substances table 2.3 from page number 28 of your ncert science textbook Okay so learn it from the textbook that table you have to learn so that's all for today's class